Dr. Jaffe, do you want to talk a little bit about um, the need for vitamin D and the value of testing vitamin D levels, um, particularly in response to the recent article that was published? Yes, indeed. A recent New York Times uh, article uh, pointed to the fact that a scientific study of the use of vitamin D as a medication, and if I remember correctly, they gave 100,000 units of vitamin D once a week in the form of ergosterol D2, the common fortification form, but a synthetic workalike that I have questions about. And in regard to um, cardiovascular disease or heart attack, uh, using vitamin D as a sole agent, using vitamin D as a medicine, using vitamin D as a pharmaceutical, failed. And that's what the article correctly reports. What the article largely does not report is that there is a best outcome range for vitamin D. This is the range where you have the least cancer, the least heart disease, the least autoimmune disease, the least inflammation, the least digestive problems, the strongest bones, the healthiest renewal, uh, the communication between your cells uh, is competent because vitamin D is actually not a vitamin. It's a neurohormone. It's a neurohormone that has kind of two molecular arms, and these are meant to stretch between two cells. So the cells are close to each other. They're almost touching. If vitamin D is present, it links between two cells and it says, how are you doing? You can stop dividing. We have enough of your kind of cells. In the absence of vitamin D or in low vitamin D people, that signal often doesn't happen and they end up with too many cells. They're not cancerous cells, but there's too many of them. Or they get transformation into cancer. I went to a consensus conference that the National Cancer Institute held about two years ago. I heard Dr. Mike Hollick, a colleague who I look to for vitamin D guidance, and others, and uniformly, the experts in vitamin D were taking vitamin D supplementation. They agreed that the difference between, say, a value of 60 and a value of 20, and here it's nanograms per ml for the technical people, the difference between 60 and 20 is at least a five-fold and sometimes a 10 or 20-fold difference in cancer risk. For me, that means I'm going to take vitamin D. And since Dr. Hollick has taught us that millions of people do not absorb vitamin D from their intestines because of inflammation and teropathy and atrophy and problems with digestion, from my point of view, we need what we have in the PERC D3 cell guard, a drop under the tongue. And how many drops? <clears throat> the answer is as many as you need to get into the 50 to 80 range. So if you're 49, I'm not worried. And if you're 90, I'm not concerned. The healthy range is 50 to 80. Other people say 60 to 100. Um, uh, other people, there are people now who are saying maybe it should be 120 or 150. And I think more is not necessarily better and too little is too little because in general, that's what nature has shown me. So I have the 50 to 80 goal best outcome range at a time when the average person in America is less than 20, and rarely are people above 30 unless they're taking uh, supplements that are actually getting into them. So many people are taking vitamin D that doesn't get absorbed. That doesn't make any sense to me. It does make sense to measure, knowing that the goal or best outcome value is 50 to 80, and to take as many drops as necessary um, to bring yourself into that healthier 50 to 80 range. And I can't predict how many drops that is. I can tell you how many that is for me. But each person is different. And that's why I think it's important to measure, then put people on an appropriate number of drops in your clinical experience, and then come back in two or three months and remeasure. And if they're over 80, I would reduce the number of drops. If they're under 50, I would increase the number of drops. Once you get them into that range, I would keep them on the vitamin D. It is easy, it is inexpensive, it is usually once or most twice a day. And for me, for me, it is taking five to 10 drops twice a day to keep me in the healthy 50 to 80 range. And each drop, if I remember correctly, has 500 IU 
of cholecalciferol, the correct D3 precursor. You want to measure the 25-hydroxy D, not the cholecalciferol, not the 125-dihydroxy uh, cholecalciferol. You want to measure the 25-hydroxy. Um, there are rare times when you should consult someone like Mike Hollick because they will measure subfractions of vitamin D in certain people on certain medicines or with certain errors of metabolism, but that's very rare. For most of us, 50 to 80 is the goal value, enough drops under the tongue to keep us there, get us there and keep us there. And once you're in that range, I don't think you need to retest very much at all, maybe on an annual basis, just to confirm that they don't need a little more, or maybe they need a little less. But the, the goal value or goal ranges for each of the predictive markers has a considerable safety margin, a considerable safety margin. And so um, I think it is okay to verify that people have a need before rushing in with supplementation. But once you verify the need, then I think you should confirm that the person is taking enough based on your clinical experience and adjust uh, based on the repeat testing. 